we conclude today the 12th chapter, speaking about the Bainini. The Bainini is an in-betweener, in between the righteous and the wicked. What does it mean in between? Not righteous. Why not righteous? Because the righteous have mastery. Complete, the complete righteous have mastery over their heart that nothing lingers in their heart, even the deep recesses of the heart, of any negativity, any lust, any pleasure-seeking it just doesn't exist there in the heart, let alone in thought, speech, or action. Which that is, I mean, think about it, folks. Do you know anybody like that? You just know that a, a Rebbe is such an individual. But it's something that we can't perceive because it's in the deep recesses of the heart, a complete righteous person. Even an incomplete, it's, it's like, you know, a little... A little kind of such feeling in the heart of seeking some kind of self-pleasure as an end in itself that is so minute that it's not even recognizable. So the Bainini isn't that way. But the Bainini can have moments of that like during prayer. But afterwards, the evil inclination our negative side comes to the fore and it's there so then how is it that this person the bainini has mastery over thought speech and action never to fall off the wagon not in any actions not in any of the words that the bainini says and now we're going to get into the idea of thought over here in a moment but how's that capable is because the mind is so powerful that what it was capable of perceiving during prayer is so strong that it can still draw upon it during the day and together with the natural love that the soul has that's hidden that's hidden it's a natural love but it's a hidden love called in Hebrew Ahava Misuteris enable the person this Bainini to prevail and to dominate the animal's soul and its cravings, its desires preventing the animal's soul that any craving that it has that it should gain any supremacy any hold on the individual and what we call the individual, the city right, to conquer it in any manner to conquer it in, in an action that would be an inappropriate action action that is God does, doesn't want right like wasting time won't waste time or words that would be inappropriate words you know words that might be nasty and even thought now when you think about a thought that is a very hard place to have any mastery over the vein in he has mastery now what does that mean how do you master in your thoughts so it means as follows why do you think what you think because you feel what you feel which that's based on how you perceive things, right? So if you perceive someone hurt you, that's how you perceive it, whether a person did or not, but that's how you perceive it. And then it, in your heart, now you are pained, you are hurt. You feel slighted. And that's going to, and you feel strongly pained by this. Of course, that's what you're going to think. Now the Bainini might be feel have that feeling. And therefore that thought will come. 
in the person's mind. But what a Bainini does is not allow it to, uh, to rest in the mind, to dwell upon it. Willingly accept that thought. The thought that comes to mind, we have no control unless you are righteous. But to cogitate the thought, meditate the, upon the thought, think the thought <laughs> that came up into my head, in, from, in my brain, in my head, that's already something that we have a freedom of choice. Now, most of us have abdicated freedom of choice, I might say, this parent parent parenthetical remark I'm making. We've lost freedom of choice because we allow that broken record to play in our heads. We've accepted, I, mean, I wouldn't even say we accepted willingly, you know, the negative thought that we have. It's called autopilot. And, and because we lost freedom, we've abdicated. When do you have freedom? Is that when you recognize that that thought came in, and that's a negative thought, that's a thought that should not be entertained in my mind. So now I'm not going to willingly to accept it. Involuntarily, it came into my head, but willingly that I cogitate now, meditate and think about it. No, the bane in me says, no, I don't want that thought and pushes it away with two hands to avert the mind from thinking that thought that comes from klipa, comes from the animal soul that is negative, refuses to indulge in it, not even for a moment, because for a moment that you indulge upon it, what are you? What are you? if for a single moment you indulge in that negative thought. You're wicked. You have a stain on the soul. And a bain you never wants to be wicked even for a single moment. And therefore will not willingly entertain an evil thought, a negative thought, a thought that is ungodly. Not even for a moment. That's pretty powerful. Now, now that it goes in, this is very interesting and powerful idea for us to live with. Between that, that's you know, it's not even not just between you and God that kind of, but between you and your fellow, and your fellow. Meaning, it arises in your heart to your mind an animosity or a hatred, God forbid, to a fellow. So we're not talking about over here, Hitler, Stalin, hate them, hate them, hate them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> not that I mean, talking about your loved ones, your family member, right? That's what we're talking about. Talking about your, your neighbor, whatever. And for whatever reason, because you have an expectation, so you have some kind of hatred or animosity towards him or jealousy, not grudge and anger, whatever it might be. So the being in you will refuse to think of them and on the contrary, prevail and dominate the feelings of the heart and do the exact opposite of what the heart's desire is. And his heart's desire right now is that was a nasty thing you said to me. Uh, you're feeling a grudge. I'm feeling anger, animosity. Pain doesn't allow that to be entertained in the mind and thoughts. Pushes away with two hands. And actually will conduct the baby will conduct themselves with this individual, with a quality of a kindness. In other words, the fact that you feel uh, hatred, anger, whatever it is, comes from gvura, severity in, in a corrupted form. To do the opposite is to be kind. To be kind is doing the opposite. In other words, to display a disproportionate love to this person who's brought suffering to you. 
without even being provoked, God forbid, or to take revenge, God forbid, of any kind. On the contrary, to repay your offender with favors. Where do we get this idea from? The Zoyer explains, and we learned this from Yosef Hatzadik, Joseph, the way he conducted himself with his brothers. His brothers sold him into slavery. He repaid them for what they did with kindness and favors. Yes, he did things in order to get them to do tshuva, right? In other words, he did bring them to a place where you know, they had to do penitence, so he, you know, was harsh upon them in the story. But when he reveals himself, they were concerned. What's going to be? And he says, God thought this for good. And therefore, I'm only going to repay with goodness, with kindness. In other words, when you understand that this is coming from God, and it's all good, ah, this person maybe didn't mean good, but God thought it to be good. And the point over here, actually, is to be able to do the exact opposite of what your heart's desire is. Yes, it's very hard to do this. First, we have to buy into the truth of it. Is it true that you should act this way? Or when someone, you know, wasn't very kind to you, so you, you not going to take revenge. I'm not going to go out of my way for that person. That's normal. That's not godly. That's not following your godly soul. That's following your animal soul. Now, okay, you didn't take revenge, so you're not such an animal. Right? That's, you know, really wrong. But, but you know, tit for tat. You're not so kind, so I'm not going to go out of my way to be kind. Because the author is saying do the opposite. That's what a Bainini does. And that's, we're all BITs, Bainini in training. Meaning we all have the capacity, the capability of acting this way. I think the difficulty that we have is that we don't want to be this way. We want to be able to hold on to our, you know, stuff. We want to be able to do that. It makes us feel empowered. It makes us feel strong, not vulnerable. Right? To most people around me, I'm saying, don't live this way. It's hard. I try. <laughs> I know that this is the truth. And that's the, the first and most important part. As this is the truth, and you want to live with this truth, so you incorporate this truth, that you repay your offender with a favor. I think the real important point is like this. We, f we, we feel that what, what we're feeling, that's reality. That's my truth. What I, and that's what Western culture tells us. That's what the psychologists will tell you. And, but that's not what Tanya tells you. And by the way, Tanya Rabbi community helps us with this. That we don't fall prey to Western values that your feelings is your truth. Here we're saying, no, it's not. Your feelings are your feelings, but it's not your truth. Your truth is what the Torah says. Well, my, my, feeling, my truth is that. And if you're here, I would imagine that that's why you're here, because this is your truth. 
not your feelings. Your feelings are your feelings, and we're not saying that you, we need to be aware of it. Absolutely. But we don't make it a deity. We don't make it truth. It's my feelings. And I've got to be aware. But I also have to be aware that those feelings, where they're coming from, they're coming from the animal soul. So if they're coming from the animal soul, don't laud it. Don't make it, you know, that's where I live. That's where I, I'm at. No. I want to get beyond that. And that's where the mind is able to have dominion over the heart. As we learned in this chapter. That the mind can have dominion over the heart. And we can do the exact opposite of what our heart tells us. Our heart tells us that someone hurt our feelings. We're going to be a little cold towards them. Right? At best. At worst... We're going to take vengeance and we're going to, you know, they did something nasty. So, you know, tit for tat, you're going to be also nasty. Okay, that probably most of us recognize is probably not the way to go. But to be cold and not to be warm towards them, I think, you know, that's kind of protecting ourselves. That's what I hear. You know, people tell me, I got to protect myself. What do you mean you have to protect yourself? Why do you have to protect yourself? Because you're vulnerable. Oh, because you're broken. You want to be whole and complete? So then someone who will hurt you, do them a bigger favor than someone who didn't hurt you, didn't, uh, who lauded you. Say, so how wonderful you are. Oh, you're so wonderful. Do to them a favor. That is the real capability of going beyond and allowing our heart to be in control of us rather than we're in control of it and telling it it's telling us and we're leading it by it yeah it's not easy there's no question I'm not, I'm not don't want to make this like it's you know so simple I, I mean the idea is simple the implementation of it is a lot of work a lot of work but that's what we're here for actually this morning's class in Hasidus which can come join us 705 every morning we're gonna have we've been have some people wake up five o'clock in the morning for they're there in uh, out in the West Coast and they're like, California is four o'clock but Arizona it's five o'clock and they're coming to the class We learned about this idea. Yeah. Anyways, questions, comments, conversation. Again, I invite you to TRC, Tanya Rabbi Community. Um, that um, what what's the community of people that can connect and like-minded like everybody that's here and is really seeking to true growth um, this is a place where you're going to really be able to get it okay, I don't see any questions Alan please share with us thank you Rick morning. good morning so I so I was I was listening and reflecting on <clears throat> That one part of the Tanya that you're describing with the mind taking dominion over them. Right. And, and I see that taking place, you know, I, I, I see the wisdom in that, but, you know, when I put on filling, you know, it's just like putting on the shell rose, putting on the, the box on the head, 
takes very little effort. Putting it on this dull yard takes a lot of concentration. Right. And, you know, so, you know, and so that, you know, and both, you know, I mean, the whole idea of children to have them both on and to have that alignment between both of them. Right. So, so yeah, I think there is, when I'm feeling, when I have my trillin on, I have, I'm feeling the dominion of the, of the shell roche uh, over the shell, yeah, you know, the head trillin over the, of the trillin of the heart. Right. But, but nonetheless, I feel that they, they are, they're equal partners in that moment, you know? Um, at least that's how I feel, you know, and I, and, and in a way, I'm much more, I have much more focused in putting and wrapping the, 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 the you know, putting on the shell yeah, it takes a, 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 a much of my power, you know, in terms of concentration. Right. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of reflect on that just in terms of, you know, because I understand where you're going with in terms of the mind taking dominion over the heart. But when I'm so, putting a fill in, it's a, it's not quite. I'm not quite in that kind of space. Um, so I, 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 well, no, I think you're actually saying exactly bringing out the point over here. In other words, what what did we just learn over here is a truth that in our minds we could get that pretty simply. Implementing it in the heart that's a big challenge and a big struggle so you know the fact right now that there's no one uh in this moment that a person's thinking about in a nasty way because someone did something nasty to you you're not thinking that so you're not you're not your heart isn't uh you know in a in a negative space it's in a healthy space so therefore when we speak this idea it's easy to entertain it philosophically intellectually because it, it resonates when does it become difficult is when in fact someone did something to me hurt my feelings and now you know i'm living in those feelings now that i'm going to bring my mind to bear on it and to not allow it to control me in my thought process uh, process um that's going to be a big struggle because now the heart is, you know, uh, is come into into play or come into into the struggle, and that's where the where the struggle will be. Absolutely. So it, it is the effort of the mind, but the struggle is, you know, with that. And the truth is, in a sense, it's not really a struggle with the heart. Um, heart. To, it's not specifically directed to the heart. Where is it directed? Where the heart manifests itself. And where is that? In your thoughts. You think about the things that you have strong feelings. Something you have no feeling towards, you will not think about. So the things you have very strong feelings towards, right? If there's something that's coming up and that's creating an anxiety in your heart, you're going to think about that. Right? You've got to speak in public and you're, not, and you're nervous to speak in public in front of three people and now you got to speak in front of 30 people oh boy are you going to be thinking about that because why that's what's in your heart so the focus over here is is not so much the the heart in and of itself but what comes from the heart is the thoughts that we have and therefore to be able to push away those negative thoughts um and is what we're talking about the dominion over here yeah all right the heart itself yeah that's going to be a, a much bigger struggle to be able to overcome because again that's the, the tzaddik has that capability but where the heart manifests itself in the in the thoughts there we can and there you're right that's where the struggle is to overcome that and that's why as you say the putting on the tefillin the head piece is much simpler and easier right then right you just put it on Okay, just get the message. The message is easy. It's not so difficult to get. Then what you got to bind it on your arm 
and then seven times wrap it around, which is the seven midas, the seven emotions, to wrap it around, wrap yourself with this, and to make this a part of you and so on, oh, that's already a greater engagement. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up because I think it brings out the idea beautifully. All right. Okay, folks, a reminder, TRC Thursday, so if you didn't sign up yet, it's a good time to sign up so you can join us this Thursday at 4.30. But you know what's coming up next? Rambam. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad, Zich, and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Natanya. Have an amazing, great day. Thank you for joining us.